people are going to lose their livelihoods, they're going to lose their homes, they're going to lose the scenic aspect, or we're going to lose all those things. It's going to change the animals, the fish, the birds. It's going to change the weather. Uh, it's going to wipe out all the class one farmland. All of those things were said by lots of very good people. And um, I suppose what insults me more than anything is that panel rejected the idea of Site C. But it's sort of like the French referendum. No doesn't mean no. No means the government can just sit around until it feels like trying again. And, and I personally think no should be no. One of the commissioners voted against it. The others were in favor of it. But BC Hydro's own projections were in error because they said we'd need the power by 1987. And of course, this is 2007. They're saying the same thing again. So I don't know if their studies or the numbers are any better this time than the first time around. But that's why it was, it was uh, they couldn't prove that they needed the electricity at the hearings. There was no sort of definite conclusion at that time. So here we are sort of 30 years later and, and still sort of looking at the same issue. You know, you're always under that cloud and um, and so in the 70s, you know, you didn't know, or early 80s, you didn't know whether you should develop, whether you should put a fence post in, whether you should, uh, you know, what you should do. Um, eventually you learn to, to just live with it because it's there all the time. It's just an omnipresent condition. They have no choice, so what do you do? You don't fix your house up. So you live in a, in a substandard house, you don't develop your property, you let the weeds go, why bother? Yeah. You know, your place is going to get flooded. And TELUS has wrote a letter to um, the Upper Cache Creek Cattlemen's Association stating that because of Site C, the, um, the line upgrade probably won't happen. You have the possibility of Site C. Because there is the possibility that it may happen sometime in the yeah. Yeah, well, like you, yeah, and this has been going on, you know, well, since about well, 30 years now. The fact that that dam has been on the books for well over 30 years has impacted us already because the land has been tied up. And so there's no possibility for development when you're holding the land. We have gone to the provincial government several times to say, it's not in your books. It wasn't in their 20-year plan until 2003. They brought it back in. Why not give up the land and allow some development? That's a concern to us on this road because the Cash Creek Bridge when you came in today is a, is a one-lane bridge and we've been after them for years to replace that with a good bridge. So this year they announced that they're finally going to do that. But it is a bridge that they can remove if they have to. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's their temporary. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a bad sign. Yeah. It's, it doesn't give you a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. So we're wondering about the timing and saying finally you're getting around to it just around the time they're talking about Site C again. So uh, I'm sure the bridge they'll put in they'll be able to move. But, but that the whole location there would be underwater and that portion of the road would be underwater. This whole project has hindered this community for over 30 years because it's been something over our heads that may happen. And, uh, and we've been living with that for over 30 years. But we find that even like with the campground, like Caroline owns the campground quarter across the creek and we, Arlene and I, we lease that from her and run the campground. But, but we always run into that there, you know, like what kind of infrastructure, you know, do you put into that? Because campgrounds need a lot of, you know, infrastructure, and, you know, and, you know, and if Site C is going to happen, then it's all for naught, you know, other than you'd get compensated somewhat for it. But, so it's always in the back of your head a little bit, and I guess maybe a person should just try put that out, but it's hard to, you know. Some people seem to think that Hydra is going to pay you more than the land's worth, which they're not. I mean, they'll just pay you market value, and that's and that's not what we want anyway. We don't, we just don't want to move. We, you know, we want to live here. And, retire here. Fort St. John has coined itself the energetic city, the center of BC's oil, gas and coal industry. MLA Richard Newfeld holds the elected seat for the Peace River North constituency and has since 1991. 
He is the Minister of Energy, Mines, and Petroleum Resources, and represents one of only three seats in the legislature that speak for all of Northern BC. We had the opportunity to meet with Jimmy Glinsky, the mayor of Fort St. John, to get a feeling of the political position of the region. Well, my name is uh, Jim Glinsky. I'm uh, the mayor of the city of Fort St. John. I'm in my first term as mayor, and previous to that, I spent uh, one term as a councillor. Um, there are mixed feelings in the area about sightseeing. I mean, we all enjoy the serenity uh, of the Peace River. It's, it's a beautiful valley between Fort St. John and Hudson Hope, where the uh, present dams are set up. I guess as a mayor of a city, and someone said they were going to build a project like Site C right next door, and it is right next door to the city. Uh, there's definitely an economic spin-off that's going to uh, help the city. It'll be uh, great to see the number of workers that probably will be in the area if Site C did go ahead. And I'd have to say, yes, it's going to be good for our, our retailers and our, our commercial businesses. Uh, on the long-term effect, once it's built, I don't think you would see much change in the community. These new dams don't take a lot of people to run them. You know, there's just a small amount of people, so I don't see it would be a big effect there. But during the construction phase, yes, definitely, there would be an impact on the city. Uh, but it would be a positive, good imp impact. It would definitely uh, help substantiate growth. And maybe uh, if you have 500 workers working on the dam, maybe I'd love to see 500 of them stay. Maybe 250 will stay, maybe 100 will stay. But that's 100 new families that we didn't have, and that would be good for the community or the region. You just uh, yeah. Oh, the, the Premier announced yesterday at the UBCM conference that he has uh, now opened up uh, government to uh, start talks on the Site C uh, dam project for the Peace River. And that means uh, consultation with First Nation peoples, consultation with the communities, with the ranchers, and the people of the area. So they are looking. Uh, he didn't say it was going ahead, but he uh, is looking very strongly at talking to the people about it, and that's good. Time is right. Considering there is no strong political opposition to BC Hydro's plan, the voice of the people is not heard in southern British Columbia. Trying to reach the south, local residents came together back in 1975 and became one united voice known as the Peace Valley Environment Association, one of the main interveners at the original hearings and are once again preparing to fight for the valley. It's very difficult to get a message down to the Lower Mainland because they're very disconnected from where their power comes from. We have to remind people all the time that the situation in the North is different and um, it, that you can't continually take things out of the North and um, use it elsewhere. It's compounded by the fact that we have a reasonably small population, so we don't have huge representation in government. And any um, uh, voice we have is obviously smaller than if you come from the north, and, and numbers count. And so it's, it's really tough to make your point and have people understand what a precious place this is. You know, there's, you know compared to down south, there's just so few people here. And there's a lot of people in Vancouver who are probably against dams, but when it's maybe when it's up in Port St. John, out of sight, out of mind, it's not in their backyard, and, you know. So maybe they'll accept it then, you know. It's uh, as opposed to having something planted in their backyard. Mm -hmm. When I fly to Vancouver, which I do as a school trustee, um, probably more than I sh well, not more than I should, but we do it frequently. And perhaps we don't think about it as much as, as we should. But I fly into Vancouver at night and every light is on. And I feel like saying to people, turn off the lights. Because if you don't turn off the lights, we're going to lose our...